Hello everyone and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox, the founder and CEO at PCClassesOnline.com. This is the first in a series of tutorial videos that we are creating for Android users. Of course, you'll find all of our classes available on our website at PCClassesOnline.com. If by chance you've never heard of us, we are a completely free public service. We have members in over 165 countries and there is no hidden fee of any kind. We really are a free service. Today we're going to be going over the latest Android operating system known as KitKat. It's a very clean operating system. Uh, in this case here, we have a Samsung Galaxy S5, which if you're in the market for an Android smartphone, there is no better. It's a wonderful little phone, uh, and to call it little is pretty much the understatement of the year. It's got a giant display, beautiful, uh, incredibly powerful camera, and a lot of features that I think you're going to enjoy. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to create this tutorial video is in doing research prior to today, I discovered that there were almost no tutorial videos out there on the web showing the very basics of how an Android works. So I hope you'll enjoy this video, tell your friends, and of course check out our website. So let's go over first, before we really get into the operating system, I want to talk a little bit about the various buttons on the phone first. So here on the right hand side of the phone, we have a sleep switch, which is also the power button. And you'll see here that if I'm in the middle of the phone, oops, sorry about that. If I'm in the phone and I want to just shut off the screen, I just simply click that button in. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to do this without making the phone move. There we go. It shuts it off. The other thing that you can do is if you press and hold it, you'll get a series of additional options here, including power off, putting your phone into airplane mode, which will disable all cellular and Wi-Fi signals. You can restart the phone. And this is a very important feature that parents should be aware of, is emergency mode. So when you put your phone into emergency mode, of course you only would do this in an emergency. The example that comes to mind would be if someone were kidnapped. This will turn off many of the fun features of the phone. So in order to conserve battery life, it'll put the display down. And the idea is you want to maximize how long your phone can stay on. When you enable emergency mode, it will send a GPS signal to one of your contacts. So parents, if you happen to be getting a phone for your kid, make sure that you put yourself as the emergency mode contact. It just means that if something were ever, God forbid, to happen, if they enable this feature, it will immediately send out a signal to you, and also, of course, the police will be able to track to find that approximate location. It only works if cell phone signals are available, so it's not perfect, but it is something. Also, you'll see quick, easy access to enable mute, vibrate only, or turn the sound on or off. Also, here on the left-hand side, you'll see the volume controls. If I press and hold this button on the left, it'll put the volume down low until eventually it hits vibrate only mode. If I press it up, obviously the volume increases. You'll also notice this little gear icon right here, which will enable you to change the volume of the different parts of your phone, such as media. That would be, for example, videos and music that you're playing, notifications, text messages, for example, and the system sounds. So that way you can have different volumes for different types of events. Also, down here at the bottom right-hand corner of the phone, there is no button if you're not actually in something. But let's say, for example, I go into the Google Play Store. I can go through the store. I can go into different aspects here. I can go here into games, and maybe I check out this one game here. This doesn't really even look like a game. But then I just want to go back one screen. That's what this button here is. You'll see it's actually lit up now. It's the back button. When you're on the web, for example, it would go back one page, and eventually you keep hitting it, it will eventually go back to the main screen. Here in the middle is your home button. So if I'm in an app, let's say I'm back where I just was, let's say I'm actually going into music now, I'm checking out different artists out there, and I wanna just go right back to the home screen, I just press that, and there I am. You can also end up pressing and holding this button to search for items, which we'll get to in just a little bit. Finally, down here at the bottom left-hand corner, we have a button known as the context button. 
So as you go into these various apps on your smartphone, uh, you're going to find that they're multitasking in the background. That's just a fancy way of saying that you can switch back and forth between them as you go into them. So let's say I'm on Instagram for a while. I can be in here. And then you know what? I want to go back to the app that I was just in. I can hit the context button and go back to, let's say in this case, I print and scan. Okay? So that's just an example of how that works. Also, I should mention, here in the context menu is where you can end multitasking. This is one feature I wish the iPhone had that unfortunately it just doesn't that easily. Here at the bottom right hand corner you'll see there's these three little lines and there's an X in the middle of it. When you press that with one click, you kill everything that's going on in the background. Also, you'll see here this little pie chart. When you tap on that, that will show you, if I had different things running here, exactly how much, what kind of resources they're taking up. So if you need to free up a little bit of memory on your phone, that's one way to do it. Next, I want to show you where to go to access the various settings for the phone. Now, we'll go through the settings in, a ver in another video, but for now, I just want to show you how to find them. It's very easy. Just take your finger at the top part of the phone and swipe down. Oops, sorry about that. And here you'll find some of the more, let's try that again. Swipe down. There we go. Very hard to do this with a tripod. Here at the very top, I have some of the more common settings that I need to enable or disable. Down here, I can have access to S Finder. S Finder is a little bit like Surrey. It's a way to search, generally speaking, through your phone and also through the web for various items. So if I have a contact that I'm trying to find in my phone, I could go into S Finder, type in that person's name. It'll pull up their contact card, emails back and forth between us, maybe messages they've sent me on Facebook, etc. Here is one place where I can go to change the display uh, for the phone. So if I want to make it brighter, I would just take this little dot here, move it to the right, or I can move it to the left. One great little trick to help conserve battery on your phone is to use auto mode. It just basically means that if the lighting conditions are, let's say it's nighttime, you don't need a bright, bright screen in order to see things because there isn't any other surrounding light. So this will just bring the brightness down on your phone. And it uses the camera in order to figure that out. At the bottom part here, you'll find notifications. So these would be, for example, apps that have updated. Uh, it might be Facebook. Facebook notifications, emails, text messages. Also, this is where you will find, if you look at the very top right, a little gear icon. That is one way to get into your phone settings. Again, we will go over the various settings here in a future video, so make sure you either subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can join our website. It is free, pcclassesonline.com. When you're done with that, I want to show you how to navigate the phone in general. Now here on mine, you'll see that we have the weather up top. This is one example of what is referred to as a widget. A widget is a little bit like an app, but it's constantly running in the background. Um, this is one that is, of course, recommended. I think it's helpful as far as when you wake up in the morning, you want to know how do you need to dress. Also below, you'll see we have access to Google. Now this comes pre-installed on the Samsung Galaxy S5, and one of the really cool features is you can actually talk to it. So if I say the words, OK, followed by the word Google, it is going to listen to me and I can just tell it what I want to search for on the web. For example, let's give it a shot. OK, Google, Provincetown, Massachusetts. According to Wikipedia, Provincetown is a New England town located at the extreme... You get the idea. So you can search for anything on Google on your phone just simply by saying the words, OK, Google. Next, let's go over navigating the various apps here. Now, first of all, you'll see here that we can swipe on the screen and you have multiple pages that you can set up where you can access your apps. And what's nice is that once you reach the end, it'll just go back to page one. Now, you can customize these screens however you like, and it's very, very easy to do so. So let's say, for example, I don't really care about having maybe Instagram here on my main screen. One of the ways that I can modify it is just by simply pressing and holding on the app. When I do that, if you look at the top of my screen, I can remove it or I can create a folder where I could also put in other apps. So if I want to remove it, I'm just going to drag it right up there to that trash can. Please be aware that removing an app and uninstalling an app are two different things, and I will show you how to do both. 
So now, as I go through here, maybe I want to add a little bit more content to this screen. This would be a great example where I might want to throw in a widget. To, to do that, just press in any blank space here, and you'll see that I get these options at the very bottom. I can get direct access to change the wallpaper on my phone. I can add widgets, or I can edit the home screen settings. For now, let's just go into widgets. So here are examples of some of them. Uh, the clock, which you just saw. Calendar. Active applications. It can show me how many are running. Uh, different Chrome uh, pages that I have loaded. My alarm settings. So if you constantly have to set an alarm so that you wake up in the morning, you can tap on that press and hold rather, and you can drag it onto wherever you want it to go. So now it's going to take me into the alarms and I'd have to create an alarm. So let's say I want to tell it to wake me up at 6 a.m., hit save, and there is where it will stay. However, I don't wake up at 6 a.m., so I'm going to remove that. Okay. Now let's say I want to add or move around apps. Okay. Let's go back here to this page. Let's say I want to move around these apps. Generally speaking, the way you do it is you just press and hold on them and you can move them into whatever position you want. You'll notice that as I do this, it shifts them around in order to make room and that's how you do that. Also, you can create a folder filled with apps. So let's go into my actual apps folder. This where you see apps at the bottom right is where everything lives. So here, just like on the main screen, I can swipe through and see my various apps. When I reach the end, it just goes right back to the beginning. So you can swipe through here for eternity. Now let's say I've got a few different apps here that seem to be in the same type of category. I've got iHeartRadio, Shazam, Pandora, and SoundCloud. Those are all music apps. If you want to create a folder for any of these, it's as easy as tapping on these three little dots that you see at the top right of the screen, and you can create a folder at which point you can type in the name of it, so I'll call it music. Okay. And now, once I press the, uh, the little plus symbol, I'm going to check which apps I want to send now into that folder. So I'll send Shazam, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and SoundCloud. Okay, when I'm done, hit done. And here we have now a folder called music. It's just an easy way as you start to accumulate more and more apps to group them together. Now let's say I want to uninstall an app. All you have to do is go here into the main app screen. Now not all of these apps are you able to remove, but most of them you are, at least if you download them. So let's say we've had a good run Brother Eye Print and Scan, which is one of the many different printing apps you can use. All you have to do is press and hold on it, You'll see here now at the very top of the screen, there's a button that says uninstall. I drag the app into it, and it gives me a confirmation screen where I need to click uninstall. And it's gone. Very easy. Anytime you want to get an app, that's where you're going to look for the Google Play Store. See, I got a little too close to Google. So go into Google Play Store, and here you can navigate and search through tons of different apps that are available. You know, when Android first came out, it really didn't have an awful lot, but nowadays it's almost the exact same number as what you can find on the iPhone. So as far as figuring out which smartphone to go with, purely because of an app is usually not an excuse anymore because almost every app that's available is available for both Android and iOS. So I can go here into Apps, and you can of course search by going through Top Paid, Top Free, Frankly, in my opinion, most of the best apps out there are free. So you can check that out. We'll have more and more tutorial videos on some of our favorite apps in the near future. When you find one that you want to get, let's say I want to get Netflix here, I just tap on it and simply tap Install and Accept. And now when I go back here into Apps in just a minute, there it is, Netflix. And that's how you download an app. So that's the first part of this video tutorial. I hope you'll check out our other videos. Again, this is David A. Cox with PC Classes Online. Be sure to check out our website. We are a completely free online service. And if you have been watching our video on YouTube, of course, we really do appreciate it when you click that little like button beneath the video. That's all, everyone. Take care.